So we have three forces. The first step would be cutting the section at the point of interest like that. So once we cut that, we would have three forces. We need to move all these forces one by one, by one to the centroid of that cut section. <clears throat> first, let's move this Px, the one over here. There will be two moves. One move would be moving that along its axis, which doesn't cause any moment, but if I move that along this axis, it causes a moment. What would be the direction of that moment? To determine that, we use the right hand rule, put the fingers along the force, curl the finger toward the direction of that cut section. The thumb shows the positive direction of Y. So that would be moment about the Y axis. Okay? And once it arrives to that point, what kind of force is that? It's a shear force along the X axis. Okay? We form a table, as we did before for the previous problem, for Px, we know that it causes two sort of forces at the cut section, Vx and moment about the y-axis. All other components are zero. So Px would be 37 kips, Vy and Fz are zero, Mx would be zero, My would be Px times distance of the force toward the centroid of that cut section, which is 3 times a, a is 6.4 inch, so that would be 37 times 3 times 6.4. Now let me talk about the second force. The second force is this one, Py. There would be two move again. Moving along its axis doesn't cause any moment, and moving perpendicular to that axis causes a moment. What would be the direction of that moment? If I put the fingers toward the y-axis, toward the direction of Py, and curl that toward the direction of the cut section, that shows the moment about the x-axis, positive or negative? Negative. Here, I showed that in the positive direction because if I showed that on the negative, there is nothing visible on this side. But that would be actually on the other side. Once it arrives to that point, it would be a shear force along the y-axis. Okay, so Py causes zero sh shear force along the x-axis, 23 kips along the y-axis, and there is not any axial force caused by that. Moment about the x-axis would be negative 23 times A, or 6.4 inch, and there's not any other. Talk about the very last force. What kind of force would be when I move that to the cut section? Axial force. What would be the moment caused by that? Nothing, because the moment is not developed when I move a force along its axis. So that's it. Once the force arrives, that would be an axial force. Okay, so Pz doesn't cause any shear, but it causes axial force of 19 kips, and there is not any moment or torque caused by that. Overall, the total shear force along the x-axis is 37 kips, or 37,000 pounds, the total shear force is 23 kips. The total axial force is 19 kips. The moment about the y-axis is negative 147.2 kips inch. The moment about the y-axis is 710.4 pound kips inch. And the overall torque is zero. OK, any questions about determining the forces at that cut section? The second step would be determining stresses caused by each of these forces individually at that point of interest, at point K. The stress caused by the axial force is F over A, and the area is area of this cut section. So that would be 4 times 9, which is 36 squared inch. And if I plug the values, that gives me 528 PSI positive, because that would be tension. This stress is uniform everywhere in that cut section. Now. We want to talk about stresses caused by the bending moment and stresses caused by the shear forces. When we talk about the bending moment, say moment about the x. For calculating the bending stress, we need to know how much is the moment of inertia. There are two moments of inertia. I about the x-axis. If axis of interest is x, base would be 9 inch parallel to that and height would be 4 inch. 
So that gives me 48 inch to the fourth. And moment of inertia about the y-axis would be, in that case, base is <coughs> 4 inch as height is 9 inch. And that gives us 243 inch to the fourth. And when I'm determining stress caused by the moment, which of these two moment of inertia should I use? Should I go for IX or IY? How can I calculate Q for shear stress problems? Should I cut the section in the vertical direction or horizontal direction? These are something that depends on the direction of the applied moment or the direction of the applied force. That is why these kind of problems are a bit more confusing and difficult. Now, I will present you with an algorithm or procedure on to determine these section properties for different kind of moments. Then, we get back to the solution of this problem. Here, this page summarizes how to calculate section properties for three-dimensional combined loading problems. Basically, we have two families. We have two categories. Consider this section, a rectangular section like this. I will call that as X family in which the axis of interest is X. This is the family where the moment about the X is acting on, or the shear about the Y axis acts on. In this family, everything has a subscript of X. The axis of interest is X, as shown here. The height is perpendicular to that axis. The base is parallel to that axis. Moment of inertia would be base height cubed over 12, and that gives me I about the x-axis. Q, or the first moment of area. To determine that, Q depends on the point of interest. Assume that the point of interest is the green point shown here by H. To determine Q, we cut that section parallel to the axis of interest, x-axis, as shown here, and consider the entire area either above that or below that. Q is calculated as this from this equation, area of that section multiplied by D, and D is distance of its centroid to the centroid of the entire section. So that gives us Q about the x-axis. Now, for the axial force, we simply divide force by area. The bending moment would be M sub x C I sub x. So everything here has subscript of x, because that is x family. What is C here in this equation? C is distance of the point of interest to the axis of interest, which is shown here by C. What about the shear force? Shear force causes shear stress. Here is the only case that we see Y subscript. So tau, or shear stress, is Vy qx ix times t. What is the thickness in this case? Thickness is the thickness of the cut section. It's equal to the base of that section, which is B. That is X family. For the Y axis family, we have MY, and everything else has subscript of Y, but shear force. Shear force has subscript of X. So in that case, the base is vertical dimension and the height is horizontal direction because that is perpendicular to the axis of interest or y. Moment of inertia is similar to what we had before, base height cubed over 12. For calculating q, if the point of interest is h, the green point here, we cut that vertically parallel to the axis of interest, we consider that area, and the q is calculated from the same equation, a times d. The axial force causes the same amount of stress, F over area that does not depend on the axis of interest. The bending moment, everything has subscript of Y, M, Y, C over I. And shear force, everything has subscript of Y except shear force, which has subscript of X. Okay, that's it. Knowing this fact sheet, we can implement that for solving that problem. So for solving this problem, let me finish the properties that we have here. We have determined I, X, and I, Y. For determining Q about the y-axis, we need to cut this section passing through the point of interest, which is K, parallel to the y-axis, calculate Q for that hatch section. How much is the area of that? Area is B over 6 times height, which is H. And distance of the centroid to the centroid of the entire section is B over 3 half plus half of B over 6, which is B over 12. So that would be Q. 
And if I plug the values into that equation, that gives me 22.5 inch cubed, how much would be Q for the x-axis? That would be 0, because if I cut that parallel to the x-axis, that gives me 0 area. Okay? Now let me get back to this problem and determine the stresses caused by the bending about the x. Everything has subscript of x. Note that the stress distribution caused by that bending moment has zero value at the x-axis, and it is maximum on the top and on the bottom. So sigma would be mxc over ix. mx is negative 147,200 pound inch. ix is 48. How much is c? For this case, c is the distance of k to the x-axis, which is half of 4 inch. And that gives me negative 6,133 psi. Why it is negative? It's important. Why the stress is negative? Look at the direction of the moment. M is negative. So if I curl my finger, if I put my thumb toward the negative direction of x, there will be compression on top and tension on the bottom. Because the point of interest is on top, that gets compressive stress. So that would be negative. Now let's talk about the stress caused by moment about the y-axis. The moment about the y-axis would have this kind of distribution. It has zero value at the y-axis and it's maximum on the left and on the right. Normal stress would be my times c over i. Everything has subscript of y. The moment, as we calculated, is 710,400 pound inch. IY is 243. How much is C here? C is distance of K to this Y axis. How much is that? It's B over 3, which is 3 inch. So the magnitude would be negative 8,770 PSI because the point on top receives compressive stress. The shear stress caused by shear force in the x direction is Vx Qy Iyt. Vx is 73,000 pounds. Qy, as we have calculated, is 22.5. Iy is 243. And how much is the thickness? The thickness that we have to use for Vx is 4 inch, and that gives us 856 psi. And for shear force in the y direction, that would be zero, because Q is zero. And finally, the stress caused by torque would be zero, because there is not any torque. Now, we need to put them together to draw the overall stress element, similar to what we had before for that two-dimensional case. If I put them together, I will see this stress element. The stress in the horizontal direction is negative 14,375 psi. There is not any stress in the y direction, and shear stress is equal to 856 psi. Note that for normal stresses, we add them together because they are all acting on the same plane. Now, it's your turn to solve a problem. Consider this pipe system. This pipe system is subjected to three loads, Px, Py, and Pz, and you would like to determine how much our stress is acting at point H, which is located on the bottom part of that pipe, next to the restrain. There are three steps to solve this problem. First, we need to determine section properties for the tubular section shown here. The section properties are provided. Second, we need to move all forces to the cut section passing through the point of interest, this section. And finally, we need to determine the effect of each of these forces on the point of interest point H. Determine all stresses caused by these forces at that point.